Hello, everyone, and welcome to our live event today. Uh, we're going to be exploring searching tools you should be using. Hi, I'm John Grubb from 4kcc.com. If you've already subscribed to our YouTube channel, thanks. If you haven't, please hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. If you learn anything today during this course, please hit the like button. Search. Search is a powerful tool. Sometimes, though, we spend more time searching or to find what we want, or we don't find it at all. And that's usually because we're not using the tools that are available. And that's what we're going to try to go over today um, in this live event. We're going to look at a bunch of tools that you could be using in search, and most likely you aren't. You might be using a few of them, but you're probably not using all of them. All right, so um, the first thing to think about is what search engine? Now, the three kind of big search engines, if you will, Google, of course, Bing, and DuckDuckGo. Um, well, let's see, before I talk about those, let me ask you a question. In the chat, uh, would you just type in there what search engine you normally use? Just type in the chat, just say, I use Google search, I use Bing, I use DuckDuckGo. If you use some other search, like Ask or something like that, just go ahead and type that in the um, chat so I can see what people are using. And um, even if you're watching this on the replay, just go ahead and do that also. Just type in the chat um, what Google's, what search you're using. All right, so here's the thing. Um, I, you know that there's some concern about privacy with Google and how much they know about us, et cetera. And this is not, um, uh, this is not the live event where we're going to discuss that. Uh, that's something we might be able to discuss again later. But right now, we're not going to discuss that. Um, but here's what I'm going to tell you. Um, Google, by far, has the most and best tools for search. Um, a little bit later on, I'm going to talk about a particular tool that Bing does not have. I like Bing. I like to use Bing. But they are missing some really important tools. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And DuckDuckGo, same thing. There, That's also missing some tools. Um, later on, when I put this video back up, in the description at the bottom, I'm going to um, give you some reference pages that you can go to to see specifically what you can do in Bing and in DuckDuckGo. Um, Today, I'm really going to concentrate on Google Search. So we're going to take a we're going to take a look at Google Search. All right. Uh, before we get into the tools, I just want to say this to you. Uh, another thing is, if you're not already uh, signed up for our blog email, please go to 4kcc.com forward slash blog. And at the very top, you'll see where it asks, at the menu, you can click to sign up. Um, so much detail that I put in blogs every week. And if you're not there already, please go ahead and sign up. All right. Let's uh, take a look at Google here. Hang on. Okay, so uh, we're going to take a look at Google, and we're going to start with the very first. And what I've done is um, I've blown up the page a little bit, and here we are. Um, I've blown up the page. <clears throat> I don't normally have it quite this big, but I want you to be able to see the tools that I'm using. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to start a regular search. And I'm going to search chicken recipes. Okay, here's the very first tool that we miss before we even go any further than this. And that is the number one tool is the drop down suggestion. Okay, so let me bring that back. Here's what Google does. When you start to type a search, the first thing it does, if you've already done that search before, generally speaking, Google will bring that search to the top. If you haven't done that search before, uh, then that won't appear. But what does appear either way, actually, is it shows you what people search for the most on Google related to what you put in. So for instance, I put chicken recipes and you can see that a bunch of stuff came up. Now, right away, I can narrow my search if I pick one of those suggestions in the drop-down menu. But for the moment, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the enter key and let chicken recipes come up. Now, here's something I want you to look at before we even get to some more of the tools. Look at the results here. Do you see the results at the top? That is one billion, not million, billion, one billion, 320 million results. Um, I'm not sure that any of us have enough time to look at every one of those, but that is definitely a big number. So, um, and that's not really a tool, that's just for you to see the results. And we'll look at that later on to see the differences of what's going on. Now, here's what we can do. Across the top, there are Across the top, there is a toolbar. And we're going to take a look at that right now. I've just kind of put a circle around it. And that toolbar varies a little bit depending what you're searching. And we're going to take a look at that. All right. So here are a billion results for chicken, re chicken recipes. But let's do this. We can look at images. And then what happens is we get, of course, results for our same search, chicken recipes, and we get lots of images. Now, another tool when you're in images, look across the top. You'll see dinner, easy, healthy, baked, spicy, whatever the case might be. There's more. Um, if I wanted um, a low carb, if I want a boneless, I could click on whatever is at the top and then my results would be pictures of boneless chicken recipes. And of course, to get the recipe, all I have to do is go to one and then click on it. And you can see it shows recipe. I could click on the recipe, etc. So that is a tool that works when you're on images. And we're gonna come back to images, but for right now, let's continue across the top here. If I click on shopping, I still have my chicken recipe in, recipes in. If I click on shopping, different shopping things come up. On the left-hand side, if I wanna put a check mark in, um, in available nearby, which I'm gonna circle here for a second so you can see it. If I put a check mark in there, now what happens is I get to see uh, things that are related that I might be able to get nearby. So I put the check mark in there and now it tells me what things related to chicken recipes are in stores near me. So for instance, Target, Walmart, PetSmart, Wait a minute, PetSmart? 
why is it showing me pet food? Because lots of pet food, their basic ingredient is chicken. So even though maybe I was looking for something to pick up for myself for dinner or for Joyce and I, it also brings up something for the dog. Um, again, though, a great tool. Now, also, along with that, look in the left-hand column. You can sort by price. You can sort by category, grocery, pet veterinary diets, dried dog food, etc. I can search new items, used items, free shipping, and who the sellers are. So that's a tool that if you wanted to narrow something down, that's a way you could do it. All right, so that's shopping. Now, you also notice at the top, there's a menu that says more. There's video, there's news, there's books, there's flights, there's finance. Now, watch what happens. If I click finance for chicken recipe, look what happens. There are no web results that have anything to do with finance for chicken recipe. Uh, let's go up and click on news. This is great. Here are news articles that have to do with chicken and chicken recipes. And you can see the Washington Post is there, Yahoo Lifestyle, the Daily Meal, uh, GMA, Good Morning America, the Today, New York Times. There's all kinds of news articles. So I know we're looking at chicken right now, but let me give you an example. If you wanted to look up, let's say, an article about um, maybe Justice Ginsburg, who just passed away yesterday. If I put that in there, I can narrow down the results by news. And then I won't be getting 50 million <clears throat> posts and things that people put up um, about Justice Ginsburg. I'll be getting news articles about her passing. So that's a way that news is really good. You might not use, I mean, you may or you may not use chicken recipes, but, you know, that's something that you could use. Also videos. So we're still on chicken recipes. If I click on videos, now I can see the websites that have videos about chicken recipes. And not only can I see the videos, in most cases, I can see the timing for the episode for the video. Uh, a few don't show up, but most of them do. Like this first one, that video is a minute and one second. This one is 58 seconds. The next one is 2311. So if you needed a chicken recipe and you wanted to um, narrow it down to a video, you could do that and then watch the video. All right, so at this point now, I want to go back up to images again. And um, I want to talk about this tool that's called Tools. Very appropriate. And what you want to do here is you want to look at the Tools menu. And in the Tools menu, if I click on that, you'll see that I can now do different things with pictures. I could sort by size. Right now, the default is any size. If I needed a large picture, I could click on large. And now my pictures will be resorted and they'll be large. Color, I can pick any color. Maybe I just want black and white pictures though. Maybe I'm doing something and I want, maybe I want to print it out and I don't want to use all my color ink. I could click on black and white and look what happens. I get picture results with black and white. Again, I could pick a particular color. If I say red, most of the pictures that I have, you'll see they have a red or a pinkish tilt to, tint, tint to them. So that's how I can do by color. 
So I'm going to say any color. I'm going to go back to any size. Um, now under the tool menu, I might want to sort by type. I could get clip art. I could get line art or a GIF or any type. And then there's the time. I want pictures from any time. Or do I want a picture from the past 24 hours or the past week, past month, past year, whatever the case might be? And again, this might not matter so much with chicken recipes, but let me give you an example. Suppose that you were trying to find, because if you're a, if you're a Keystone Computer Concepts uh, customer and you get our question of the week email, you know that I gave the example of my sister trying to find an obituary. Well, for instance, if I knew that there was some event like an obituary or a wedding, let's say, and I know it occurred in the last week, instead of getting all these search results, I could search past week. Okay, and again, we're in the picture menu. Now, here's a very important tool when it comes to pictures. Usage rights. As it is right now, I've asked for all usage rights, but I could ask for Creative Commons licenses. And those are the licenses that you could reuse the picture somewhere if you wanted to. Now, sometimes you have to give credit, but you don't have to pay anything. Commercial and other licenses usually means you have to pay a fee. And sometimes you pay just one fee and then you can use it as many times as you want. Other times you have to pay a fee for every time that you use the image. But that's a very important tool. Now, let me go back to the all and get out of pictures for a minute. And I want to explain that the tools menu is still there. And you can see that it has changed. Now we only have anytime and all results. So let's look at those. Anytime. Same as in the pictures. I can choose the past hour, the past 24 hours, the past week, whatever the case might be. I can even set a custom range. Then there's all results. That means it'll give me everything. Verbatim simply means it'll say exactly what I put in the search. And we're going to talk about that um, in a little bit. All right. Alongside of tools, you'll see that there's a settings menu. Now let's take a look at that. If I click on that, there are a number of different things on there. Um, we can set our search settings. We can choose languages. We can turn on or off safe search. We can hide private results, which we're not going to talk about today, actually. Um, the advanced search, search activity, your data in search, and search help. The main one that I want to um, emphasize right now is advanced search. And that's what we're going to look at, advanced search. Now, I actually have some customers who use this page as their default search page for Google. Not the usual one that we use. They use this. This is their home page. And here's why. This is what you can do in advanced, advanced search. You see that I it has in there ch chicken recipes, which of course is what I put in originally. Now, I could put in an exact word or phrase. I could put in any of these words. Notice when I put it in, it's all these words. If I put in any of these words, it will go even bigger. None of these words. And then numbers, the chicken recipe is not going to have numbers. But let me show you the example. Do you remember how many results we got for chicken recipes? Under none of these words, I'm going to type in rice. All right, so I don't want any recipes that have rice in them. Okay, so now I go down to the bottom and I say advanced search. And look what happened. I went, just by eliminating the word rice, I went from a billion to 650 million. <laughs> now, that's 
still a lot to look at, isn't it? But you can see all I did was eliminate one word, rice, and it cut down on the results. All right, so again, let's go back to the advanced search so I can show you a few other things. Uh, we'll take the rice out of there for the moment. Down here, we can narrow down our search in different ways. We can say we want in what language do we want? If we click this drop down menu, you can see all the languages that we could look at for our search. Any language will give me anything, but I could pick, say, just English, or I could pick just Spanish or Italian whatever the case might be. And my search will come back, let's say Italian, and let's do the advanced search. And here it is in Italian. Uh, these are Italian related. That doesn't mean the page is in Italian, but it means that we're looking at chicken recipes that are related to Italian. So here it tells me search Italian pages. All right, so I'm gonna clear that right now. And we're going to go back once again to advanced settings, advanced search. Again, I could pick region. And it gives you all these countries, areas of the world. When, anytime. Now, that's very similar to the drop down that is easier to get to instead of coming here for it. All right. You want terms appearing anywhere on the page in the title, in the text, in the URL, et cetera. So you can limit that. Now, here's a very good one, file format. If I hit that drop down, I can pick different formats. So let's say I want to see the results in PDF, Adobe PDF. Maybe I want to download it and print it, whatever. So now I'm going to click advanced search. And I'm, I'm actually down. Now, look at this. My search results are now down, and I'm only at 6 million. By just saying that I only want to look at PDFs, I've cut my search results way down. Okay, so we see what that does. Again, let's go back to advanced search. And then sort of the final thing is usage rights. And that goes back to just like the pictures, creative common licenses, commercial licenses. So um, that is um, the advanced search. It's a great way when you're trying to find something to cut down on what you're doing. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say chicken recipe 6 million is still a lot, correct? Okay, so that's where it comes in where you can add some other words. Let's say in this case, maybe I want a chicken recipe with rice. So this time I'm going to add the word rice instead of using the negative sign. And I'm going to say any format. And now I've got 493 million. That's still a lot. But now I have recipes that are chicken recipes, chicken with rice. The more um, sort of things that you put in there, uh, like if I add the word noodles, see now I've cut the search down more. The more of those words you can put in, the smaller the search results will be, all right? So that's a way of cutting down. And you can do that right in the regular search. All right, in addition to doing these type of things, there are some um, uh, other kind of cool things that you can do. Uh, here's what we're going to do now. I'm going to take out this chicken recipes and all that good stuff. And now I'm going to use a search term called site, S-I-T-E. So I am going to type in site, colon, for 
kcc.com. You saw it in the drop down menu. That meant I was there before. I'm going to hit my enter key. Now, here's what has happened Google is now searching only the 4kcc.com site. So if you had been on my site and read something and then you can't find it, you could do site colon 4kcc.com and it will give you the results for just this website. In this case, it's mine, but you could do it with any website and you can see what happens here. Now we have about a thousand 1150 results. Those are all search results just from 4kcc.com. This is a great tool. You know, you were on a site, you read an article, and then you go back to the site and you can't find it. You can just use site and put the site URL in. You don't need the www. You don't need the HTTP or the HTTPS and all that stuff. Just the domain, um, which in, in our case is 4kcc.com. Now, let me show you there's something else you can do with site also. Uh, it's not just uh, that you get all the results. I can go behind this, and now I can put in some other term that you think might be on my site, or maybe that's where you read the article. So, for instance, on my blog, especially, I talk a lot about social engineering. So now I'm typing in site colon 4kcc.com space social engineering. And I'm going to search on that and look what happens. Now I'm down to 114 search results. See it there? 114. And in the case of social engineering, you'll see most of these um, are, you know, have to do with my blog, but I have social engineering on other areas of my site as well. So by using the site, by adding something behind it, I can cut down on the search. I use this tool. Um, I can't tell you how many times I will read an article on some site and then I can't find it. It, it. You know, maybe I deleted my history or, you know, maybe it was a long time ago. And I can just go back to the site and use this and find out what I'm looking for. It's a great tool. All right. Now, uh, let's take a look at uh, some other things. And here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to get out of this, and I'm just going to type in uh, chicken recipes. Um, yeah, we'll do chicken recipes again. Now, here's what I want you to notice, and I'm going to put a color circle around this so you see it. I want you to notice on these search results, do you see this little down arrow? Okay, that's to give you the opportunity to go to a cache. Now, here's what this means. If I hit that, you'll see it says cached. I'm going to click on that, and let's look at the top. I know it's a little small, even with the page being bigger, so I'm going to read it for you. This is Google's cache of, and then it gives the website. It is a snapshot of the page as it appeared on September 18th, 2020 at 1829.38 GMT. The current page could have changed in the meantime. Now, why would you want to use that? Here's one that comes in real handy. It's actually two reasons that you might want to use it. Let's say you went to a website and the website was down. You know, that happens. Just remember this. Websites are on servers and servers are just computers. Now, they're fancier than the one you have, but they're just computers. They go down just like your computer might go down. 
So you might go to a web page and find out that the page can't be displayed. Well, if you found that in search, you could click and get a cached version of the website. All right. And that means it might be a few days old. It's whenever the Google uh, robot, you know, has searched and, you know, Google robots search the web all the time. And they record a page as it is on a particular date and time. So you could go back and look at it, even though the website is down right now, you could still look at a cached version of it. Now, here's the other thing that you might want to use this for. Oh, I know you know this. Do you know that web pages change? Oh yeah, they change. Web page owners make changes. So now let's say you were just on this website two weeks ago. And now you go back and you're saying you're scratching your head. Like, what did they do on this page? They've changed everything. Well, depending when they changed everything, you might be able to go to a cached version and see how the website as it was before. And that might help you find something. Again, it's all about search. So that's the cache version. Now our next tool, I love this one. These are, and there's a bunch of them here. I simply call them keywords. And I'm going to demonstrate some keywords for you. And then later on in the description follow-up to this, I'll have all this that you can try it. It'll be all spelled out for you. But let me give you a perfect example. I use this one. I, I, I can hardly think of a day that goes by that I don't use this one. The keyword is define. D-E-F-I-N-E. -E. Now, I can space, and you can see some of the suggestions, again, those are suggestions based on what other people are searching for. But so if you saw something there, you could pick it. All right. So um, if it's not there, you just type in what you want. So I'm going to say uh, define composer. And then I hit the enter key. And here's what happens at the very top. I get a dictionary. Um, I get the word, tells me what it is. And then it gives me different things. Right now on this particular one, it gives me similar. Um, sometimes it gives me synonyms. Sometimes it gives me uh, anonyms. I mean, there's all kinds of things that might show up. And there's a little speaker there. If I click Composer. on that. it will actually pronounce the word for me and I can learn how to say it. So define, you can use that for anything that you want. Define um, printer. And it gives me a definition. It gives me, it tells me it's a noun. It gives me that. Now, under that are more search results for the definition. But the definition, how to pronounce it, are right at the top. If I want to know more, I could go down. So that's a great uh, thing that we can do. So I, again, I use define all the time. And especially when I'm writing, because sometimes I need some word and, you know, um, my, it just won't come to mind for me. So I hit define and I put the word that has, has come to mind to me, but it's not the one I really want to use. And I put it in there and I can get it. Now, another thing I might want to use, here's another keyword you can use. Etymology. Okay. Now I can put in there and I can say a uh, computer. Hit the enter. And what it does now is it tells me where the word computer comes from. 
right at the very top. What's the root of the word computer? And it gives me all that. So if I need to know where a word came from or how it was about, let's take a, let's take a look at this one. Let's see if um, we can find out where the word malware came from. Okay, it gave us what the original, and what it tells us here is that it actually combines two words. It tells you a blend of malicious and software. That's where malware comes from. So we can find out where a search, uh, where a, a, a word comes from simply by using that. So those are two key. Now, here's another thing we can do. Suppose that I want to um, use the word love, but I want it in a particular language. I want to know the result. So now all I have to do is in and then put my language. So do I want to know it in Italian? And there it gives me the Italian. I can pick any language and get a result. Um, do I want to know it in uh, French? There it is. All right. So in and the language that you want, you simply put that after a word that you want to know what it is. Now, I know we all have, or probably all have translator apps and things like that, but at the same time, um, this might be a lot faster if you just do that. All right, so that's another um, keyword. Now, here's something that um, we like to know every one, once in a while. So I'll put uh, Port St. Lucie Sunrise. And it tells me that the sun is going to rise tomorrow morning at 7.09. I could have put sunset, and it would give me the sunset immediately at the top. A big time saver. Yes, more information is listed below, but it gives me that. All right. And then uh, uh, let's take a look at... Um, the use of a hyphen. Now, we sh I showed you this in advance, but I'm going to say chicken recipes again. And I'm going to say minus rice. And again, that's the same as going to the advanced search and putting in, you know, that word not to show it. But this is a real quick, easy way. Just type it and then minus rice or whatever the term is that you don't want to get. Um, you know, a lot of times you'll put a term in and, and you maybe get a bunch of things related to a movie or to celebrities or something like that, and that's not what you're looking for. So you could put a minus sign and whatever word you don't want to see and do the search that way. It's, it's another great thing. All right, so um, let's move on back and let's go back to Google here. And I want to talk about two other tools that are um, pretty neat. And one of those is that you can search by voice. So if you look, you can see at the end of the search, there's a microphone. As long as you have a microphone on your computer, you could click on there and it will let you talk into the microphone and you can do a search by using voice. So if I click on that, it asks me, uh, you will see that it does ask me, do I want to allow Google to get my microphone? And I would have to say um, yes. And then it would tell me it's listening, et cetera. Now it won't work for me right now because I'm using my microphone for this broadcast. So I can't use the microphone for both of them. But that's what you would do. It's very simple. All right, now let's go look at images which I'm going to the shortcut, which is in the upper right-hand corner. And here's the other tool I want to show you. Uh, the tool is, you see the little camera? Search by image. This is another great tool. When I click on that, I could paste a URL in there uh, that may have some of, of an image. But more 
likely I'm going to upload an image from my computer. So I click choose file. And when I do that, my Explorer comes up. And uh, I'm going to go look for a particular picture that I want. So bear with me. And you see pictures of Gus, the crazy dog. So I'm going to click on that and then open. And what Google will do is upload the file. And then it's going to compare the picture to other things in the search engine. So let's see what happens. All right, so here's what happened. It says that the possible related search is Karen Terrier. And of course, Gus is a Karen Terrier. And if I look down, look at all these images of other Karen Terriers that came up. So by uploading a picture, I let Google search and find other, in this case, Karen Terriers. Um, will Google always find something related to a picture? No. Some of us sometimes have some weird pictures. And when you, you know, when you do that and upload it, Google will come back and say, it can't find anything. But again, this is a great tool if you're trying to find something in particular. So don't forget the little camera search by image. You can paste a URL or you can upload an image. It's another great little uh, search feature that's just really handy to have. Okay, now, as kind of a, a bonus thing, this is not really a tool in the sense of finding it on Google search or any of the other searches for that matter, but it's a tool that you can use uh, based on your own thinking. And that's this, be specific. So for instance, when I put in chicken recipe, recipes you remember all the results that we got the more specific we can be like i showed you before adding rice adding noodles adding soup as an example they suggest that one you see that it cut it down now sometimes you can actually put a whole phrase in. And that's something that people don't realize that um, sometimes you can put a phrase in, like you could say, um, I want a chicken recipe. Boy, I, I want to say receipt. Recipe um, for crock pot. Um, and they're suggesting with rice, I could put that if I wanted to, or I could put the minus sign and say, I don't want any rice. And now I can hit enter. And again, I'm cutting down the results. Kind of the main suggestions are at the top, the recipes, et cetera. And it also tells you what other people ask for. So you can ask, you can put a whole phrase in and often that will narrow down what you're looking for. Um, just phrase. Like, for instance, I'm going to put in, um, can I use an SD card as a hard drive? See, that's the whole phrase. It's a question. You can even put the question mark if you want. And here's what happens. You get a quick result that tells you what to do with an SD card and that. And then it, there's some more stuff, more things. Um, and again, at the top, if I go to videos as an example, you get, um, you get results for that phrase. All right, so you can put entire phrases in. All right, so here's the thing. There's lots of tools. I've tried to show a lot of them today. 
I've tried to explain how to use them. If you learned anything at all, would you go ahead and just uh, give a give a um, give a little like and um, again, if you haven't subscribed, would you subscribe? Subscribe to us. All right, so let's come back here. Let's take a look. All right. So at any rate, that's it for today. That's it for this live event. And I've tried to show these search tools. Again, this will be available a little bit later. And then down in the description, I'm going to have some links for things you can do. Please sign up for our blog if you haven't done so already. And also um, give us a like. And uh, we appreciate it. So that's it for now. Thanks and have a great rest of the day.